today i'm gonna give you guys something a few of you guys asked for on my last video which is a step-by-step -step pitching sequence tutorial which means for the first four to five innings of this game i'm gonna give you guys everything that's going through my mind when i'm choosing what pitches to throw and where to throw them we're gonna be throwing grinking on the bump because i know he's a very attainable card that has a pretty decent pitch mix he's got four seam slider sinker curveball circle which is pretty good and that's about all you need to do well online now these first few innings i really just like to get a feel for the opponent see what he's gonna swing at what he's not gonna swing at what he likes what he doesn't like that's probably not a good first pitch but hey we know he's early on it we know he's looking sitting fastball we're gonna go sinker away see if he chases it and he does rolls it over to second now we're gonna test him on the slider see if we can get him to chase that it's always 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 a good thing to see if okay probably should have thrown that a little further out but one thing I am picking up on very early is that he is not scared to swing first strike, which is a very good thing. When you get an opponent that is not opposed to swinging early in the count, it can turn into a lot of quick outs for you, which means you can save your pitcher a lot longer. I don't think there's been one pitch I've thrown where he hasn't swung yet. Now I'm going to go way out with this slider, see if we can get him to chase it. If we can, God bless. That was not way out. Go way down with the curveball, see if he likes the ones in the dirt. He swings at that. Mental note there. We'll keep that in mind. And now we're going to go way up with the fastball. See if he chases this. Nope. Okay, that was still way up there. Now we're going to go curveball back in the dirt for a third strike. See if maybe he chases it again. We can get lucky in a strikeout. Yes, we do. So just from that first inning, what's going through my head right now, we know that he will swing first pitch. He is not scared to swing first pitch. He is not good at seeing balls low specifically curveballs. Uh, he he did fairly okay on the sliders, but absolutely not on the curveballs. We'll test the change up next inning. And he seemed to see the high ones all right, and he's sitting fastball because he's very early on the off speed, and he timed up um, the fastballs at least early or pretty decent. Got it. All right, we're gonna test him out again, see if he's got the same patterns as last inning, or if you know he's just a completely different person, because sometimes that happens. So we're gonna go low curve brawl. Hung it a little bit, he rocked it. Now in this situation, no outs, runner on first. I'm looking for a double play ball, which means I wanna throw a double play pitch. So I'm gonna throw most likely a loan away slider, loan away sinkers, um, loan away change-ups you can get him to roll it over sometimes to the third baseman but i'm not throwing up in the zone there's zero chance i throw up in the zone right here and he gets lucky with the hit that's fine we are still technically in that double play situation so same approach as last at bat and we hang a slider and he pops out to the catcher sometimes you're gonna get lucky oh god and here we are being stupid Oh my god, bro. I'm gonna test him out with the up and in fastball, see if he's sitting on it. Dude, could I hit a spot? I mean, there we are. Didn't like that one. We're gonna test him with the inside slider. He likes those, dude. I know he wanted that. Fair enough. Sinker outside, see if we can get him to ground out. Nope, he walks. All right, back in the old play situation. Absolutely going to do everything in my power to not hang anything. It's exactly where we want those. Okay, two strikes on him. I'm not throwing anything in the zone here. We're going to chase. See if he can go back to the curveball and chase it. Nope. We're going to up and in. Try to get him to pop out. He has not swung at one of these yet. Maybe we can catch him looking. And we do. Now, pay attention to what I said just before that pitch. He has not swung at one of those yet. I might catch him looking. That's just me thinking in my brain. Still hasn't swung at one. I'm going to throw it until he does. Because I don't think he'll catch up. All right. And I'm an idiot. Sometimes that happens. It's going to be a one-run ball game now. Now, it seems as if the curveballs from last inning are just no longer in the equation. He's no longer chasing them. So now we got to rework our approach and figure out what he's going to swing at now. What mistakes he can make now. side. 
Alright, ball four. That's ball four. This dude's so weird for that, bro. So A sinker inside on the hands is one of the toughest pitches to hit in the game. If you're struggling with not knowing what to throw, locate a sinker. Locate a slider. One tip that I will give you guys is this year, if you're throwing sliders away, it absolutely shrinks down the size of your opponent's PCI to like a golf ball. Like the PCI could be this big on a fastball. I promise you, if you're throwing a slider away, it's like this big. It's actually insane. And I promise you, if you do not believe me, look it up. Look at that sinker in. We got him to pop it up twice. Now, if you have a right-handed pitcher on the mound and you're struggling throwing against switchies or lefties, I'm telling you nine times out of 10, throwing inside to them, like a pitch that breaks inside will work. Now, I didn't throw that inside enough. That's on me. 100%. I'm going to try that sinker inside again. Ball one. Ball one, no strike. Didn't locate that well enough. There it is. He's late on that. We're going to try the curveball. Go back to it from the first inning. There we go. Sometimes it just takes a minute. If you're throwing it too much, they're going to look out for it. I'm going to try this slider away, get him to chase. It was a great pitch. I'm shocked he didn't swing. He must have just... Forgot what he was doing. I'll go home. All right, now we got to be smart here because a home run, he can take the lead. So we're going to try to get him to chase this curveball first pitch. There we go. Strike one. Now we're going to throw the up and in fastball because he never really got around on it. That was very not up or in. Now we're going to go back to all reliable curveball in the dirt. It's an 0-2 count. We don't want to throw anything near the strike zone, especially with two runners on. One ball. And that's fine. He doesn't need to chase it for that to be a win. We still have three strikes to play with, or three balls to play with. Two balls, two doesn't chase that one either. Now, the last time we got a strikeout looking, we went up and in. We're going to try that one more time. Now we're gonna go slider away. He's probably thinking I'm just gonna serve him one. That's fine. Slider in. He definitely went. Circle change. Okay. There we go. Circle change. This dude's not swinging at anything right now, man. Three. Got him. Oh, yeah. See you, ball. Seed. Head. Over Heezy. Come on. Get out, ball. Yep. Mm hmm. Feels like I'm playing on veteran right now, dude. My PCI is ginormous. Probably shouldn't leave a bronze in with zero confidence and no energy, though. I mean, that's just me. Get out. Thank you, brother. Oh, you got to play four innings, right? If I'm not mistaken. I'll strike all day. Good pitch, good pitch. Now, for what we hope to be this last inning, what's going through our mind right now is just don't give up a run. Don't give up a run. We're out of the game. He absolutely seated that on a sinker inside. You know, that's just a good swing. Sometimes you can't do anything about that. Now that I know he's on that, I'm not going to throw it anymore. It's that simple. Once you figure out that somebody is like 110% of the time on something, you want to lay off it for a while. Maybe you can come back to it later in the game and maybe they've lost their touch. Now you're throwing them off. Pitching as a whole is really just a mind game.
if you're going against a good hitter, that's one thing. But if your pitches are just predictable, that's a whole nother thing. You could be going against a bad hitter, but your pitches are predictable. You're going to get railed. Like I'm getting railed right there because he hit it 63 off the bat. And now we are no longer out of the game. Laying off that sinker in. We're going to go third ball down. Takes it. We're going to go that fastball up and in. He hasn't seen it in a while. Whips. Too late. Fastball up and away. Probably look. As a pitcher, you want the hitter to be the predictable one, not you. You want to figure out their odds and ins and outs. Damn it. We gotta play another inning, bro. All right, now this inning, I'm gonna just try and be ballsy and throw some absolute dots. Damn good pitch. Pretty good swing, though. All I want here is outs. I'm trying to backdoor a sinker. It's a great pitch. Throw the sinker low and in here. Exactly what I was looking for. Monesty just decided he didn't want to move. Now, once again, we are going to try for these double play balls. And he's going. Gone. When you're on the mound, you always want to listen for sound cues. Your catcher will always yell something. If you do not have a headset on, you're at a severe disadvantage. Most of you probably know that. I would hope. Try to get him to swing over something here. Maybe get a ground ball. Looking. Now we're going to do that fastball up and away, which he has not swung at all game. Hopefully we can get him striking out looking right here. Oh, hell no, bro. He just robbed Griffey. That's crazy. Did Polanco the beast? Four for four? And I'm under it. Of course. It's all memorization. You got to memorize the patterns that your hitters are going through. What pitches are you throwing? Make yourself unpredictable. You do not want to be predictable. It's all memory. Constantly while you're pitching, think about how can I be unpredictable? What pitch has he not seen in a while? What pitches are working against him? If a pitch is working 100% of the time against your opponent, you have zero reason to not rely on that pitch until he proves to you that he's on it. Which it seems like right now this guy is on nothing. Except that. All right, now if you got a pitcher that's getting rocked, don't be afraid to take his ass out. Now we're out of the inning. Just like that. In the gap. That's so gone. Good game, brother. Good game. Now, just looking at this stat sheet, I'm going to tell you right now, no matter how good you are at pitching this year, good hitting and good swings are always going to outweigh your best pitches that you throw. It does not matter. You could absolutely dot the shit out of someone. Put a good swing on it, that ball's out of the park. That's just the way it is this year. If they put a bad swing on it, it might just get fouled off. You could absolutely dot them up. You could absolutely beat them on a pitch, and they could still beat you somehow. That's just the way it is this year. That being said, you guys, the memory aspect of pitching and the being unpredictable, I would say, are the two most important aspects to pitching online. If people can pick up on you and just absolutely predict you the entire game, you're going to get rocked every single game without fail. I don't care if you guys need to keep a chart right next to you on a piece of paper that showed you exactly what pitches you've thrown, exactly how many times you've thrown them, and exactly how many times he's hit them. You want to be as successful as you can be this year on the mound. It's going to come here. It's not going to come in your skill on the game, most likely. Because anything right now can get fouled off. 
any good swing can get taken yard. Any bad swing can go yard. I mean, it's really just a mind game that you're playing with the hitter. Just think of this simple sequence when you hop into a ranked game. Your first inning is going to be your setup. It's going to be you throwing whatever you need to throw to get some good information on your opponent. Now, the remainder of the innings you have your starter in, it's just going to be solely focused on your memorization, your patterns within yourself and within the hitter. What he's swinging at, what he's not swinging at, what he's picking up on, what he's not picking up. It's a direct correlation to real life baseball. You think whoever's calling pitches in the MLB player's dugout is not picking up on exactly what the hitter likes to swing at. They're not watching film. They're doing everything they can to get information on the hitter before he steps in the box. And since in the show, you don't have a different opponent every single batter like you do in the MLB, it's one person. The patterns that he has at the beginning of the game are gonna be the exact patterns that he has at the end of the game. And that's gonna string through every single hit. It's not correlated hitter to hitter to hitter. It's one opponent, you're playing one guy. Think about that when you're going into the next ranked game. Remember to be unpredictable and kick some ass.